Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Get Good at Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a coaster that's quite often overlooked in this game, which is the Powered Coaster, or better known in this game as the Mine Ride. So, what sets these coasters apart from other coasters? Um, so, um, let me disable the rain. As you can see here, um, well, it might be a bit difficult to see, but these coasters have three rails. So there's the two outside rails, which is for the normal coaster wheels. And difficult to see, but there's also a, a third rail in the middle of the track. You will also see that in real powered coasters. Basically, it's the middle rail is a friction track. Um, in the coaster trains under uh, many of the seats, there's actually a motor that drives uh, a tire and that tire grips onto the friction track and that's actually what propels the coaster forward. So these coasters uh, typically don't have uh, any large uh, hills. Um, typically it's just uh, a series of uh, pieces of straight track followed by uh, lots of banked curves and uh, helixes. It's one of the few uh, ride types where you can often see uh, stacked helixes uh, on top of each other. Uh, I've ridden quite a few of these, uh, these myself. Um, they're not very spectacular, they're mostly oriented towards families, uh, so because, also because they don't have any uh, big uh, drops or hills. Um, I do like riding them, uh, especially in the winter, because the motors that are under the seats tend to keep the seats quite warm, so it's a nice way to uh, to warm up. Anyway, uh, when you start the coaster, well, on normal coasters you can start with uh, with an unbanked uh, curve, but on this coaster you'll want to make all your all your turns uh, banked because uh, they usually do two or three circuits and on the second circuit it will be doing this uh, this curve at uh, quite a high speed so you'll want to avoid uh, high lateral g-forces now how do you make an interesting layout for these coasters um, <laughs> basically anything goes for these coasters uh, just uh, just make a succession of, uh, of helixes uh, also include some uh, some straight tracks. Maybe some uh, some little hills. Actually, we could already do that here. We could make a section uh, over the water here. Let's do a helix over here. But yeah, like I said, uh, really anything goes for the layout. Um, the coaster layout itself, it's really easy to make. You can easily use this coaster to fill up a space you have remaining in your park. Um, the challenge about these coasters is to actually make them uh, look interesting. And to do that, you really need to use uh, nice uh, scenery. Uh, what you'll often see for these coasters is that, uh, well, usually there's just uh, nice buildings that it uh, travels around. Um, quite often they just travel above uh, paths, um, just so the guests that are walking under them can uh, see the coasters and then maybe uh, decide to ride them. It also gives the riders a nice view of the, of the guests. Uh, below them could be their parents uh, who are excited to see their kids do their first uh, coaster okay we could uh, finish like this this is not my uh, my best layout of course I just made this in uh, in, in a minute or so two minutes maybe um, so yeah, uh, when you go to the settings, you should set the number of circuits to two or three. 
Uh, let's do two for this uh, for this coaster. Uh, don't be afraid to make the station quite long. Uh, these rides often have really long trains on, uh, in uh, in real life. I mean, and when it has finished, usually it, the stats will be uh, around five or around four for uh, for excitement, intensity, and nausea. So yeah, these rides are. Uh, an easy way just to get a ride with a really good stats uh, without much effort really um, so yeah to make these rides uh, look nice uh, what you'll probably want to do is uh, put some uh, nice buildings around it the mine team usually works well uh, I've been on several of these coasters uh, myself which were really uh, teamed wonderfully um, especially the one at uh, Europa Park uh, it's really nice. The, the train there actually travels through some caves with uh, where you can see glowing minerals and stuff. And actually, guests can also walk through the cave and uh, they can actually watch the coaster uh, speed by. It's uh, it's it's quite cool. Also in Hyde Park, uh, the coaster also travels through some uh, caves. In uh, the caves are beautifully decorated on the inside, and uh, you actually also travel through them with uh, with a monorail. So yeah, there's some nice interaction between the rides there. So yeah, if we uh, disable clearance checks, uh, we could decide to put this part of the coaster inside a cave, or we could uh, make it with uh, with scenery. That's really uh, up to you. Of course, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm doing this really quickly now, so it will probably look like. Uh, like crap uh, at the end of the video but yeah this is just uh, to give an example of how you can do it you can also make the cave with scenery and uh, just make a cutout so you can easily see uh, what's happening on the inside um, also you should generally avoid using this uh, mountain tool too much uh, but yeah I think you get the idea just uh, Try to do something interesting with the scenery around the track, because the track, these tracks themselves, uh, they usually aren't very uh, spectacular. Now there are also powered coasters where uh, only a part of the track is a powered coaster. Um, one of those is uh, the coaster called Dragon at uh, Legoland Billund. Actually, the first half of the ride is a dark ride, and then the second half of the ride is, a, yeah, like a powered coaster, which travels uh, outside. That coaster also actually has uh, two trains, and it only does uh, one circuit. Um, I will show you how also how to build something like that uh, in a minute. Um, First, I uh, just want to show you something you can do here. So yeah, like I said, these coasters often uh, are built over paths. So yeah, as you can see, this, uh, this looks quite nice. The guests are going to have a nice view of the coaster passing by, and they may uh, decide to ride it uh, afterwards. Let's make some subtle height differences here. Then we could also make a path that passes under here. You we'll probably need some uh, fences here uh, <laughs> to keep the guests out of dangerous areas. But yeah, I think this gives a nice idea of what's possible with this uh, coaster type. Like I said, they're not the most spectacular rides, mostly oriented towards families. But they can look uh, quite good uh, if you decorate them uh, nicely. And some path interaction uh, for these uh, coasters is always nice. Now, you can also make uh, make one of these rides uh, with a dark ride section if you want, but for that we cannot use the powered coaster or trains, the, the mine ride trains, but uh, for that I would use a train like the mine train coaster, um, because the actually the accelerating behavior is programmed into the train, so if you put the powered coaster, the mine ride, then 
uh, well, if you take that train and put it on any coaster type, the train will try to uh, reach a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. So if you have one of these coasts with a dark ride section, obviously you cannot use that train. Because in a dark ride section you want the train to get to go uh, slow. So what you could do is uh, just start with a mine train coaster track. Um, I will just make a little dip here and then put a brake brake section here at 14 kilometers per hour. Um, I could also make it slower or uh, faster, but uh, 14 kilometers per hour, I think that's a nice speed for a dark ride section. Uh, so right, here you could make a castle, for example, or a cave, or just a section where you want the train to go slow. Like that. And then here you could, for example, put a block break section. And then here start a uh, chain lift. And then uh, if we enable the allow chain lifts on all track pieces, cheat, then you can just uh, make a section here uh, like like a powered coaster, so with helixes, etc. And just put a chain lift on all track pieces. And then set with the unlock operating limits uh, cheat, you can set the chain lift, for example, to uh, 50 kilometers per hour. And then it will try to keep a speed of 50 kilometers per hour uh, throughout the track here. Now, uh, what you should be careful of is that uh, if you make a downwards section, then actually the, the chain lift uh, resets. So for downward sections, on every downward section, you have to enable the chain lift again, or else it uh, disables automatically. All right, and here I will disable the chain lift because it will have enough speed here. And here you could put a block break section if you want. And then you could have two trains on the same uh, coaster. Um, it's sometimes a bit tricky if your track is filled with uh, chain lift because sometimes it will see uh, the top of a hill that has chain lift on it as another blo block section. And sometimes block sections uh, don't really work well if the block sections are too close together. So yeah, it could be a bit finicky to do this. <laughs> I uh, would advise just sticking to the first method of, method of a powered coaster that I showed you. Um, just to show this in action. Um, so we have three block sections here. We have one train. We can set it to two trains if we want. Um, the lift hill chain speed, we can set it to, let's say, 49 kilometers per hour. And now we change it to a mine ride. And just press test. I'm not sure if it works uh, correctly with the block sections. It should work correctly. Uh, not sure if it does, but we'll find out. Anyway, it will be going slowly through the section. You could put really nice decorations here for the guests to look at. And then after it reaches this block break here, which is now invisible, then after this, uh, it will go through this section at a higher speed. Uh, this ride normally doesn't have a uh, block. Uh, this ride normally doesn't have block uh, sections. So that's why those parts of the track aren't visible. So to fill up these gaps, you could uh, make one of these rides in the other direction just to fill up the gaps. So here with the tile inspector, I just uh, select this piece. Let's make the track in the other direction, just so we are sure it doesn't merge. Let's copy this uh, track piece. And let's paste another one here. Alright, there we go. So now we have a powered coaster with a slow section in the beginning. and. A fast section at the end with uh, helixes and stuff and that's mostly because here we used the normal mine train coaster instead of the powered uh, mine ride coaster anyway those were two ways to make a powered coaster in this game uh, it's a ride type that's often overlooked but uh, it usually fits perfectly in a family oriented uh, theme park 
Alright, I hope this tutorial was uh, useful for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you again in the next video. See you later. Thank you.